So we talked to Luis Severino about this. We see both of you are sporting something you're not allowed to do over there. <laughs> How nice is it to not have to shave? <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, I think it's a good look. Speaking of Pete, obviously you guys, both Florida Gator teammates, I'm just excited to be not only you know on this team, but specifically with him. He, he makes me better, he makes guys better. Um, so, you know, again, um, I'm excited. Have you talked to DJ Stewart about the fight? Um, <laughs> I just remember sprinting in, and then before I knew it, Jameis Winston had his hand around someone's <laughs> neck. <laughs> Vito Calise, Jonathan Barron, we're here with Harrison Bader. Thanks for meeting us at the Apple. But you know what we realized? We've said this to like every single player, and we've never said to them before, the name of the podcast is Meet at the Apple. So I feel like if we don't if we don't say that, it's just kind of confusing of why are you saying thank you for meeting us at the Apple? Yeah, I mean, I thought when you guys said that initially, I thought you guys were confused and thought we were in New York, but we're actually in Port St. Lucie, Florida, so. A little beautiful weather in Port St. Lucie. It is gorgeous this time of year, I have to admit. <laughs> today, is, today is rough. Speaking of apples, I guess we might as well just get it out of the way. What is your favorite apple? My favorite apple? Uh, the sour green ones. Great Smith. Granny Smith's, yeah. This man's yeah. got a good, uh, good taste bud there for yeah. apples. Oh, yeah. So we talked to Luis Severino about this, both former Yankees. We see both of you are sporting something you're not allowed to do over there. <laughs> How nice is it to not have to shave? Uh, yeah, listen, I think it's a good look. Um, I've gotten some compliments on it. I've gotten some good comparisons since I've grown my facial hair out. So um, I think it's good energy going into a, a really good year. So I'm excited to kind of see what the, uh, what the beard has in store for me. How much growth is that? Is that like the day you signed the contract, you're like, that's it, we're done shaving here, we're letting it, fl <laughs> we're letting it fly? No, I think I kind of went through a, uh, a little bit of a, not a crisis, but I was trying to figure out what my look was gonna be. And it's hard to push out those curls, you know, in such a short period of time. So I think uh, I went this way and kind of grow it in. So I've been growing this, yeah, for, for some time and I think I'm gonna, gonna continue on it. So how's it feel to be playing back in New York? You're from New York originally. Are you like living at home right now? Like, what are you doing? Uh, no, I live, I live in New York. I live in Manhattan. Um, so Vito's from Manhattan also. I am so. from Manhattan. Yeah, Where yeah. are you living these days? Um, I live on the Upper East Side. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. So we no, don't yeah, don't give it to tell people. <laughs> say exact street don't location. Don't the man on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't say, hey, you live near Stumble Inn? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I'm living on the Upper East Side. Um, but no, listen, like you mentioned, getting an opportunity to come back into New York City, be a professional in New York City. Uh, listen, I just, it's, it's a great opportunity. Um, Swinging it across town, taking the seven train to Queens. Is that how you're going to get to work? Are you going to take the seven to get to City Field? Yeah, I mean, I took the four a lot. Um, really? I mean, the traffic is, y'all know what it is. I mean, the traffic is, is, is a lot. I think it'll be a great experience. You know, there's, uh, there's new energy over there, um, different colors. I'm just excited to dive into it. Um, and again, just, it's all about the baseball, right? It's all about the ball. It's about the quality of work. Um, but, but to be able to do it in my hometown in this uniform, obviously, is very special to me. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to just taking full advantage of it. Now, you're from New York, and you're actually related to somebody from one of the quintessential New York City bands, Vampire I Weekend. I agree. What's your favorite Vampire Weekend song? Oh, my God, so many. Like you said, shout out to my cousin, Chris Bayo. Love you, brother. Um, incredibly talented. Um, just group I've been listening to ever since they kind of um, really blew up. Um, I think my favorite song I played every single morning is M79. That's a good one, yeah. From one of their original um, albums. Um, like their whole album, uh, Contra. I mean, it, just so many things. I mean, one of my favorite songs too is uh, Giving Up the Gun. I was about to say, the, the music video is incredible with yeah. RZA, the whole and Jake yeah, yeah. Hall's in it. Uh, I, I yeah. love that video. I love, I think, do you bike at all? Like, are you a, do you like, like, like ride a bicycle? Not really, no. So a little I, dangerous in New York. I, I ride a bike <laughs> everywhere and I feel like Vampire Weekend is perfect. You're on a bike, it's the summertime, it is, and yeah. you're listening to like Orchata, it absolutely is. Yeah. or Oxford Comma. Yeah, I was actually in the music video in Oxford Comma. You, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, me and uh, some of my other cousins, we were, we were in that music video, we shot. Were you in Cousins? If you weren't in the Cousins, is that something about not, you? I've always thought that, but I don't think so. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know. I guess I'll have to ask Chris, but, um, but no, listen, I, I think, uh, like you mentioned, like those summertime vibes, uh, Vampire Weekend is like an absolute staple in my playlist, so uh, shout out to Vampire Weekend for sure. What about Charles in Charge? Uh, like for my, for your other cause is for Scott Baio. Scott Baio. <laughs> um, no, yes, I'm related. Also related to Scott Baio. <laughs> um, we got some, yeah, we got some New York City love. Um, no, I mean obviously my uh, more my parents' generation. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, there's a. I like to say there's a lot of talent in the family. Let's just keep it like that. Boatload. Have you uh, have you used the Vampire Weekend song as a walk up song ever? I have not. No, not yet. That um, might be. It might be something to do. You know. It. Yeah. It is. Um, Every year is a new opportunity to dive into, you know, 
to a new song or to a new, who knows? So. We've got a new beginning here in Queens, so it might be the perfect opportunity for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely, we'll definitely see. Now, I feel like you get a lot of look comparisons. Like, I feel like there's a few people off the top of my head I can say you look like. And I have a friend <laughs> named Chris Stefano who gets compared to you constantly. When he was at Bernie <laughs> Williams Day, every single former Yankee was coming up to him to say you guys look alike. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'd like to see it in person. I, I don't know how much we look alike. I definitely know I'm funnier. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually a very, I'm a big fan of, uh, of his humor. Um, well, you have I actually a mutual have, friend. Yeah. Who's a mutual friend? Pete. Is he, is he really close with the... I, he's done, uh, Chris has done Pete's... Uh, oh, yeah, no, I did know that. I did know that, yeah. I thought you were going to say you, because we, we just became friends No, today. dude, we're buddies. Um, no, I've actually, I've actually gotten that, too, a little bit. Uh, like I mentioned before, I've gotten Cooper Cup, um, kind of just growing this out a little bit. Um, but, yeah, no, listen, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty funny. Logan Paul... No, yeah, wait, Logan sorry. and Jake. Jake, Jake, Jake Paul. Paul. Yeah, Logan Jake and Paul. Jake. Yeah. yeah, I've gotten... You're a fan of theirs, some, right? Yeah, absolutely, of course. Um, <laughs> we, respect, we respect those guys and the work they do. Uh, different sport, but very athletic, and we, we, we appreciate the athleticism. But no, I mean, again, I, like I said, I think, uh, I think it's fun to just see, you know, what kind of comes of it. I've, I've had some different looks over my playing career, so, um, so yeah, I guess we're kind of diving into that energy now. You mentioned respect. I was doing a little reading about you, of course, preparing for the, for the conversation we're having here. And I came across that in 2022, during the lockout, you decided to, while we weren't playing baseball, spend your time as a phys ed teacher back in Missouri. And you were doing it for free, which all the <laughs> yeah. respect right there. Yeah. So how did that come about? And what was that experience like? Uh, you know, one of my closest friends um, in St. Louis is a state, uh, state senator in Missouri. And he, you know, St. Louis is just such a tight community. Um, and it, there was just an opportunity to get away from, you know, all of what was going on and so wrapped up in it. And I really just need to make sure I was getting my workouts in and stuff like that. But, you know, in my off time, I had the ability to do some really good work. And this is when I was still with St. Louis. So um, popped into St. Louis, um, you know, did some, did some work with the children. Um, and just, you know, like I mentioned, St. Louis, you know, they love their baseball there so much. Um, so to, to, Deliver to those children in, in that way, I think, was um, extremely fun. It was, it was fun for me. I, I hope they had as much fun as I did. And, and yeah, it's just I think it's really important to maximize your, uh, you know, your schedule, especially when we're going through a time that was kind of uh, problematic. So I, I definitely uh, made some kids happy and, and in turn made myself really happy to, to kind of get through uh, what we're going through there. It's rather impulsive of you. Which part? Impulsive. <laughs> oh, impulsive. Yeah. Is that the reference to his podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Well done. He's a big fan. I'm waiting for more of those throughout this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for them. Well, we're going to play a little game with you now called Meet the Met. Of course, you're a new Met. So it's for us and other, other fans to uh, get to know Harrison Bader a little bit. So we'll throw something out there and you just kind of answer it, whatever comes to mind, whatever you're feeling. Sounds good. All right. It'll be very impulsive. It will be. Hopefully not too impulsive. By the way, <laughs> were, you, were you playing dodgeball with the kids? Yeah, but I have to tone it down a little I was bit. Gonna and say, I was going lefty. Okay, that's fair. A couple, a couple of kids got on my nerves though, and I went ready just to remind them what well, was good. I was a camp counselor for years. You got a positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. Once I taking a, out. taking a, a rubber right to the face from more Harrison like, Bader. More just like up and <laughs> <What>? tight. <laughs> more just like up and tight. You know, as long as if you hear, if you hear the music, wind, yeah, that's, the what tower. Saying. Buzz, oh, that's what I'm saying. All right, it keeps the kids in order, <laughs> raising them right. All right, here we go. Meet the Met. Uh, what is your go-to pregame meal? Go-to pregame meal. Um, that's a good question. If I was playing a game tonight, I would have Spanish food. So like rice and beans, grilled chicken, and some spices to kind of get me, uh, get me juiced up. There's like this green habanero sauce that I love. So a little dash of that, um, some lime, just some light. I don't know if that's considered light, but it is for me. Um, and yeah, just get, get going off that. You know, it's funny you said if that, that's light or not. Recently, we got invited to dinner at Pueblo Vieja, and I said, no, that's a little too heavy for me tonight. So where'd we go instead? And then we went to Hibachi. Which is not light. <laughs> that's I, not light. That's not I, even. I think it's lighter than Pueblo Vieja. I think you got to I got to check it out. I got I to gotta check it out because I'm actually looking for some spots in, in Port Sanctuary. Oh, we can oh, give you tons of racks. We, Kyle yeah. G's? All right, there we go. Yeah, we have a, we have a whole. All right, whole I'm going to need it because we're, we're here for 40, 40, 40 days. Yeah. 40, 40 days. days in PSL. That should be a movie, or at least a podcast series, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if there'd be enough content for a movie. We could squeeze it into a, an hour-long podcast. Maybe 12 episodes, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Meet the Met, food question. Fried ravioli, mid? 
fried, I'm not a fan of fried ravioli. No. I mean, I just don't understand why people in St. Louis hold it. They do love it in St. Louis. They have their delicacies, and I think St. Louis people are very proud of, of their culture, and that happens to be part of it. Um, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan. Yeah. All right. As a New York guy, best pizza topping? Oof. Best pizza topping. I go, um, I go pepperoni and mushroom if I want to be. Uh, wow, I've never heard that. Comment. I want to be a little spicy, and I, I mean, loads of crushed red pepper too. Okay. Um, like I do like pizza. Enough? No, you can never have enough crushed red pepper. Just like Parmesan on pasta. Yeah. Um, when the guy comes over with the Parmesan and puts it on, my wife gets mad at me because I usually just say, uh, "Keep going." Keep going. I say, "Wreck me." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see that in action. Dude, let's go. We got to go to dinner and I got I, I to gotta see, I gotta see this happen in action. 100%. I will do it with a straight We're face. not talking the, like the, we're no, talking the, the greater, greater. The greater. Yeah, like, okay. If it's not that, then it's just, there's no point it's in even bringing it by. I'm not here. Yeah, I agree. All right. What's your favorite pizza place in New York City? Scars, Lurie said. Okay. The number 44. Why'd you go with it? 44. Why'd I go with it? Let's see. My favorite number is eight. Four plus four. Four plus four is eight. The math checks out. Uh, I was 22 last year okay. and got a second opportunity in New York. Double down. 22 times two is 44. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And Queens is twice as good as the Bronx also, so. There you go. There we go. There you go. What's your go-to emoji? My go-to emoji is the upside down smiley face. That's a good one. Because you could, it has so many uses. It's yeah. like you could be up to no good. It could, it's up to interpretation. Um, I think with the emojis, having good, good emojis, you should be able to re- type in emojis without using any words. I, w- I want to be that good at it. So I think the upside down smiley face gives me a lot of versatility, can apply to a lot of things. If you could have one superpower, and you're very talented. I mean, you fly. We've seen you make incredible catches in the outfield. <laughs> Thank what you. would it be? One superpower would be knowing every pitch that's coming mm. in the batter's box. It's a good superpower. What about would and you if wanna, it was a ball or a strike? Would you also want to know every question that was coming your way before you sat down with no, us? No, I like I like going on. Uh, I like going off the rip. I think I'm pretty good at uh, spontaneity. Exactly, at being very impulsive. That's the third. This is free advertising. I'm, I'm doing Harrison. more than you. Though. You are. You, you brought it in, but I'm I'm, I'm capitalizing. There's not on many it. puns like you do outside. That's just their podcast name. I mean, I know. I, I, know. I was thinking. I was sitting here just like going through my head like Logan, Logan, Jake, <laughs> Jake. What can I do with this? Jake from State Farm. Logan, log. Yeah. And I got nothing. We got we got we got longer. So we'll see if you pull anything out. Where's the sky start? Does oh, it start God. down here? I just start all the way up top. Where does the sky start? Once you leave the atmosphere. That's what I, I heard him ask that earlier, and I was like, does he know there's four layers of atmosphere? And but I, get, I, I think skies are related because for, for an ant, the sky's right down there. Does it go to space? Is there I'm sky sure space? every clubhouse has conspiracy theorists. So I'm sure many people would answer that it starts just below the bubble that we're in or whatever. Oh, oh, the, the flat, you were talking about flat earthers who think we're in like a dome. And yeah, this is in all, a dome. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that question, I, I'd be curious to see how many people answer it how, and what different ways. This is how we find them. This is how we sniff them out. <laughs> you could be our clubhouse. Put them course. live. You could be our correspondent. Uh, if you had a podcast, what would it be named? That's a great question. Um, I have no idea, but I would definitely incorporate the word tots. Tots? Yeah. It's my nickname. Why is it your nickname? Um, was tots, tots. Bader tots. Bader tots. Bader tots. Yeah. I was thinking tots, like, like uh, what was it? An, the office, from the office. Scott's yeah, Scott's tots. tots. Oh, yeah. But where does the nickname tots come from anyway? Uh, it was coined by an upperclassman when I was on the uh, varsity baseball team and just, just hey, Bader tots from across the gym stuck immediately. Bader tots would probably be the podcast name if I had to say. That yeah, something tots with tots. Good. I think it's, I think it's an, I, my favorite like side breakfast meal. Yeah. Um, and it's an underused word. It is. It's a strong word. Is that your favorite kind of a potato or way to have potato? I do like a classic like potato, mm-hmm. sweet favorite potato. Kind of French fry. Favorite kind of French fry? You got waffle. You got steak fry. You, you got, got the smileys. smileys. I'm gonna go like the um, like the really thin like good Shoe crunch. String. Shoestring. Shoestring. Yeah. Now I saw you. I saw. I, saw, I passed you in the hallway before. This is before we were friends. This is back in the day. Yeah. It was a few, like an hour. I hope I didn't big league you. No, dude, you did. You totally did. No, we, made, we, made, we did make awkward eye contact. But was there a head nod or not? There was a head nod. Okay, there we there go. There was a head nod. There we go. When you were walking out the gym, you looked like you were getting a good pump in. Yeah. What are you benching, dude? 
Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not like a big uh, heavyweight. It's more about like, you know, moving it fast. Like what's your routine? There's a, how much time we got on this podcast? <laughs> it's um, up to you. Now my routine, listen, I think it's, I think it's really important to get your body ready physically to go do baseball things. So that kind of, um, you know, those lifts just really look like a lot of moving fast, stabilizations, twisting, isometrics. Um, but honestly, it's really, it's, it's really, it's really simple. It's straightforward. Um, the hard part is just the, uh, the repetition of it and sticking to it, especially on days where you don't want to, you yeah. know, nobody, nobody wants to never miss a Monday. Um, there are certain things Pete will talk about this, but Monday and Thursday lifts at University of Florida. Didn't matter what the situation was. Didn't matter how good we were. Death, taxes, and Monday and Thursday lifts. And that's, that's kind of always stuck with me because, again, you got to get at least two in um, a week. So, um, you know, if I'm feeling really good early in the year, stay in a good routine, I'll get three in, maybe four, but um, lighter, but definitely at least two Monday and Thursdays. Speaking of Pete, obviously you guys, both Florida Gator teammates, yes. Who reached out to who first after you uh, agreed to terms with the Mets? Was it you reaching out to Pete, or how'd that go down, the conversation? Yeah, obviously, Pete's done an incredible job here. He's, uh, you know, he's really the face of this organization for many reasons due to his success, and he's plugged in. He, he hit me up immediately, um, and I was actually, you know, because this is the first time I kind of went through a process like this, so I was told my family, my very close friends, um, but I really didn't leave that room because I didn't know how, you know, the protocol of it. And I didn't want to, you know, I felt like if I told somebody, then it was going to be nulled. Who knows? So I just was like, <laughs> my mouth is shut. <laughs> but, uh, but, Pete, but Pete reached out, um, obviously showed tremendous love. And um, I'm just excited to be not only, you know, on this team, but specifically with him. He, he makes me better. He makes guys better. Um, so, you know, again, um, I'm excited. Do you remember spring training? It happened like maybe 500 feet from where we're sitting. 2020, you were with the Cardinals. The game's on ESPN, Pete's mic'd up, mm -hmm. and you draw a walk, mm -hmm. and you're down at first base, and there are the two college teammates <laughs> chatting, keeping it, and all of a sudden, I hear the F word. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just having a, you know, enjoying the game, doing, some, doing <laughs> yeah. a thing, and I hear the F word. Uh, yeah, that was actually <laughs> like mid at bat. I remember digging in my first at bat, and as I'm digging in, you know, I look up at Pete, and I just smile, and I remember seeing it after the fact, but he's like, oh yeah, he's, Look at he's effing smiling at me, <laughs> and I think that's uh you know it's just it's fun to have that synergy. It's have you know it's always fun to compete against people you know, um, so I I do remember that happening. We had a we have a mutual coach obviously from UF who was he watches every single game every time I step on that field he's locked in on all of us and and past Gators and. I remember him calling me after, and he said he couldn't stop laughing when he heard Pete curse on national <laughs> television. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, how does ESPN not bleep that out? I think they wanted it in. Everything happens for a reason on TV. I think act they wanted it impulse. in there. You think they act on impulse? <laughs> well done. Thank you. I have three, you have two. No, you're beating me, man. <laughs> hey, have you talked to DJ Stewart about the fight? Um, <laughs> Pete and I actually <laughs> talked about it, and we are going to do We got his side of the story. Some, we're going to do, well, do you want the center fielder's side of the yes, story? Yes, please. I, I want no every, emotion I want every involved. angle. <laughs> I had no emotion involved. Listen, college, college sports is all about that, um, that energy behind the scenes, right? Rivalries. Um, obviously, in Florida, it's a, it's a hotbed for that. So um, rolling in hot as it is. And, um, yeah, listen, Danny, Danny threw a good pitch. It happens. You get a little jammed up. Um, and Danny, you know, is, is a fiery guy. I'm happy he's on our team. And, you know, he wasn't backing down. And, and DJ's a big dude. And he wasn't backing down. And <laughs> when you got two dudes, you know, bearing down on each other, n neither one wants to back down because they're wearing, you know, wearing their school, their school colors they got to represent. And fireworks happen. I just remember sprinting in. <laughs> and then before I knew it, Jameis Winston had his hand around someone's <laughs> neck. And I was like, I thought, <laughs> I didn't know that, like, this was happening. And it just all happened very fast. And I just... Uh, Listen, I think it just goes to show you that at the end of the day, um, you know, you got to play with fire and, and both those dudes have it. So Pete and I got some got some fun stuff coming up for that, because I think it's a very rare opportunity, especially when you kind of reach the pinnacle of this game to uh, to be able to have full circle with some guys you played against so many years ago. Um, so uh, we're going to have fun with it. Uh, we're going to make them kiss and make up. I hope they did. You guys should reenact it. Go, go out to field four and let's just like, we can stand in for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, someone will be... I'm not sure if Mendy's going to like that, but... No, you know. I mean, it's a team bonding thing, you know? Team Everyone bonding. else yeah. can watch and yeah. it'll be great. No, we're going to we're gonna pump it up. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Well, dude, thanks so much for sitting and talking with us. It was amazing. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much.